Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Physiosaurus. In today's video, I am going to talk about the pathological gait. Okay, so in the previous video which I have already uploaded on my channel, in that video I have discussed about the three types of pathological gait. So the first one was neurological gait, the second one was leg length discrepancy gait and the third one was painful gait or antalgic gait. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the muscular weakness gait and the uh, joint limiting gait. Okay. So let's talk about the uh, first one, which is muscular weakness gait. Okay. Now in muscular weakness gait, uh, the first gait is, it is due to the weakness of the abductor muscles. Okay. Now due to the weakness of abductor muscles, there could be two possibility. Okay. So one type of gait, uh, it can be Trendelenburg gait or it could be duck walking. Now, if you talk about uh, the reason of the Trendelenburg gait, so it happens when there is one side weakness of the abductor muscle, while in case of duck walking gait, it is the weakness in the both side of the abductor muscles. Okay. Now, what happens in the Trendelenburg gait is during swing phase, uh, let me change the color of the ink. Okay. Now, during the swing phase, so now during the swing phase of one lower extremity, the opposite side of the hip abductors help to prevent the tilting of pelvis of the swinging extremity. Okay. And patient bends his trunk towards the paralyzed side. For example, paralysis of the right gluteus medius results in pelvic drop over the left side while going for the swinging phase. You can look at it in this picture okay now here as you can see there is right side of the uh, right side paralysis of the gluteus medius muscle okay so here this is the gluteus medius muscle okay so as you can see here the paralysis of the right gluteus medius muscle result in pelvic drop okay pelvic drop over the left side okay so as you can see there is pelvic drop here here as you can see there is pelvic drop okay uh, the normal position of the pelvis was this one and there is pelvic drop as you can see here in this photo okay so there is pelvic drop in the left side while going for the swinging phase now let's understand what happens in the duck walking gait now in the duck walking gait there is swaying motion of the hip from side to side it is commonly seen in the neuromuscular or musculoskeletal condition. Okay. So this is a neuromuscular and this is musculoskeletal condition. Okay. Now there is lurching of the trunk happens while walking. Okay. So this was all about the Trendelenburg gait and the duck walking gait. Now let's talk about the third one, which is gluteus maximus gait or rocking horse gait. Now, it happens uh, gluteus max, uh, maximus is a hip extensor muscle okay now what happens in the gluteus maximus gait in the gluteus maximus gait your thorax moves posteriorly at the heel strike okay to maintain the hip extensor of stance leg resulting into backward lurching of the trunk as you can see here in this picture okay as you can see here there is the uh, movement of thorax posteriorly post posterior movement of the thorax at the heel strike okay at the heel strike to maintain the hip extension of the stance leg okay resulting in the backward lurching of the trunk okay now the next gait is quadricep gait it is also known as hand to knee gait okay as the name itself says quadricep gait so it happens due to the paralysis of the quadriceps muscle okay now if you talk about the etiology of the quadricep gait it could be due to femoral nerve neuropathy reflex inhibition or trauma such as three degree strain strain okay strain strain now what happens in the quadricep uh, gait patient compensate in the trunk and the lower leg and there is forward flexion of the trunk combined with a strong ankle plantar flexion causing the knee to extend okay so there is forward flexion of the trunk this is what happens 
okay and along with the forward flexion of the trunk there is an plantar flexion of the ankle okay so this both leads to the extension of the knee okay without this the extension of knee isn't possible okay because there is paralysis of the quadricep muscle okay now the knee can also can be extended by the iliotibial band okay and if the trunk hip flexor and ankle muscle can't perform the movement then the patient may use the hand to extend the knee so as you can see there are three types of movement occurring first is forward flexion of the trunk okay second is ankle plantar flexion and sorry only two types of movement occurring now if this two movement doesn't uh, perform okay uh, with its full range of motion then what does the patient do the patient uses the hand patient uses the hand to extend the knee okay now the next one is high stepping gait it is also known as foot dropping gait if you talk about its etiology it could be due to polyneuritis muscular dystrophies uh, or peroneal muscle atrophy okay now high stepping gait is due to the paralysis of the dorsiflexor muscles of the ankle okay now to compensate and avoid dragging okay the toes against the ground patient lifts the knee higher than the normal okay now what happens here is to compensate and avoid the dragging of the toes against the ground patient lift the knee higher than the normal lifting the knee means flexing the knee okay and at the initial contact the foot slaps on the ground because of the loss of control of dorsiflexor muscle and why there is loss of control of dorsiflexor muscle because of the paralysis of the dorsiflexor muscle okay and it could be due to the inj injury in muscles okay or peripheral nerve supply or nerve root supplying the muscles it these are the Uh, common etiologies of why there could be the paralysis of the dorsiflexor muscles so it is due to the injury in the muscle or it could be their injury in the peripheral nerve supply or it could be the injury in the nerve root supplying the muscles okay now the next gait is plantar flexor gait it is uh, now what happens in the plantar flexor gait in the plantar flexor gait there is loss of plantar flexor muscles okay so which results in the decrease or absence of the push off now push off happens in the stance phase okay now since the push off is absence so the stance phase is less and there is shorter step length on the affected side now the next one is sotic limp gait it is commonly seen in the leg calf pers disease okay what happens in the sotic limp gait it is uh, it ha what's happen here is there is difficulty in the swing through and the limp may be accompanied by exaggerated trunk and the pelvic movement now what's happening here is during the swinging the limp there is exaggerated movement of the trunk and there is exaggerated movement of the pelvis okay because of the difficulty in the swing through movement okay now it is caused due to the weakness or the reflex inhibition of the sous major muscle so why the sotic limp gait occurs it is it occurs due to the paralysis of the sous major muscle okay now affected leg moves in the lateral rotation flexion and adduction of the hip okay now the next one is genu recurvatum gait genu recurvatum gait happens due to the paralysis of the hamstring muscles okay now what's happening here is the your knee goes for the hyper extension in the mid stance phase okay while transmitting weight through the stance leg okay the knee goes for hyper extension due to the lack of counter action of the hamstring muscle okay and during the terminal swing knee snaps into extension to slow down the forward swing of the affected leg okay now it is commonly seen in the case of the polio 
so here uh, the fourth type of the pathological gait is finished and now the next one is joint of muscular limiting gait so the first one is hip flexor contracture gait okay now what happens in the hip flexor contracture gait hip flexor help in the swinging extremity to move forward okay so if the contracture develops then there is restriction of extension and hyperextension during mid stance and push off phases so first you need to understand what does hip flexor muscles do so it helps in the swinging extremity to move forwards there is first point now the second point is whenever the contracture develop in the hip flexor muscle then there is restriction of extension and hyperextension this is the uh, second point and there is restriction in this particular two movement it happens in the mid stance and the push off phases so this is the third point okay now in order to compensate this the person will develop greeting position now what is greeting position a greeting position is when hip is flexed and the person trunk lean forward okay as if he is bowing okay as you can see here this is what salutation uh, position is as you can see here the hip is flexed and your uh, trunk is moved forward okay now there is a case in the hip flexor contracture uh, the case is when there is fused hip okay when there is fused hip so when there is fused hip the uh, the walking pattern of the patient is compensated in two ways okay so the decreased lordotic and the posterior pelvic tilt will allow the leg to swing forward but the increased lordotic and anterior pelvic tilt will allow the leg to swing posteriorly which is known as bell clapper gait now bell clapper gait always happens in the case of fused hip okay so in case of fused hip this is how the patient walks by decreasing the lordotic curvature and uh, posterior pelvic tilting and increasing the lordotic curvature and with the anterior pelvic tilting okay and this is the diagram of the bell clapper gait as you can see here in the first diagram the leg swings forward by flattening the lumbar lordosis and tilting the pelvis posteriorly while in the second figure in the figure number b the leg swings backward by increasing the lumbar lordosis and tilting the pelvis anteriorly so in the knee flexion contracture so the next point is knee flexion contracture so what happens in the knee flexion contracture so there is excessive dorsiflexion during the mid stance and an early heel rise during push off also the step length of unaffected side is shorter okay now the third one is triceps sure contracture okay what happens in the triceps sure contracture in the triceps sure contracture knee is forced into excessive extension during mid stance okay because there is insufficient length of the plantar flexors to allow dorsiflexion okay now the fourth one is ankle fusion okay in the ankle fusion there is fusion of the subtalar joint and the two articulation making the transtarsal joint and it results into loss of ankle pronation and supination which makes the patient uh, difficulty to walk in an uneven surface okay so this was all about the pathological gait and the types of pathological gait so thank you so much for watching the video